Galnet News Digest, 11th of August 3306. We read the news so you don't have to. In this week's news, Brewer faces tritium lawsuit. Cobra Mark IV remains awfully exclusive. The end of the galaxy again. A hearty conclusion. The announcement of an announcement. Brewer faces tritium lawsuit. Disgruntled fleet carrier owners have initiated a class action lawsuit against Brewer Corporation after the troubled company attempted to appease its customers by giving away free tritium. The second tritium top-up came as mining engineers struggled to resolve the apparent shortage of tritium, and is an attempt to fend off criticism of fleet carriers as an impractical white elephant. However, there were early reports that the free tritium was causing misjumps, with carriers stuck in lockdown with the jump counter on zero and no one able to enter or leave the carrier. The lawsuit cites these misjumps as evidence that Brewer has failed to exercise due care when designing their fleet carriers and claims that the free fuel supplied was contaminated with deuterium. In related news, the galaxy has been struck by a plague of so-called orange sidewinder failures that prevent ships from entering supercruise. The failure condition is named after the legendary vessel belonging to the Lave Radio Broadcasting Company. Whoever flies the orange sidewinder, goes the legend, will pretty soon afterwards experience a technical failure of some sort. Which, as listeners to Lave Radio can attest, is absolutely true. Cobra Mark IV remains awfully exclusive. The Cobra Mark IV, which Falcon de Lacey made available as an exclusive offer to early adopters of the Vodal Scarab SRV, will remain exclusive following a court ruling. De Lacey had argued that the exclusivity of the ship, which was tied to its marketing deal with Vodal, came to an end when rival company Core Dynamics bought Vodal out in April 3305. However, the Supreme Court of the Pilots' Federation, presided over by Monsignor Stephen Benedetti, ruled in a brief verbal judgment on Monday that because commanders were promised exclusivity at the time of purchase, that it would be unlawful to sell the vehicle either new or second-hand to any commander not included in the exclusivity deal. This means that the Cobra Mark IV will never be made available with the PS4 flight control system. The Cobra Mark IV, which despite its reputation for being more sluggish than its Mark III stablemate, is by far and away the best small hauler, with a capacity of 96 tonnes, and it also makes an excellent small mining ship with ample internal compartments and five hardpoints, compared with the Mark III's four. Critics have unanimously declared the Cobra Mark IV as a far superior ship to the Lacon. Asp Scout. The End of the Galaxy. The bafflingly bonkers boffins of Canon Interstellar have been up to their old tricks again, this time analysing the astronomical charts to find planets that are likely to collide. Early on Sunday morning, a flotilla of cannon ships clustered round their fleet carrier, the Kitsune J7V-15N, to watch two Class Three gas giants in the Koi 413 system very nearly collide. The planets, nicknamed rhubarb and custard, have virtually the same orbit but dramatically different orbital periods, so that they meet up in orbit every 39.8 days. On some occasions, they get so close that you could jump from one to the other, if they weren't made of gas. Cannon's finest pencil chewers calculated that the 9th of August 3306 at 08 32 would be one such close encounter, having witnessed the event from multiple angles they were unable to confirm if the planets had in fact touched. But Cannon 
is in it for the long term and has calculated the next close shaves will be on the 6th of December 3306 at 1711, on the 15th of January 3307, just before noon, and that the big extinction level event when the two planets will score a direct hit will be on the 23rd of June 3307 at about quarter past three in the afternoon. Death Cult Homo Terminus, which has been foretelling the end of the universe every 20 years or so since the year 2012, is reported to have hastily rewritten its sacred texts, predicting the end of the galaxy, to coincide with the date that rhubarb finally splats, face first, into custard. A hearty conclusion. The Art of War campaign to collect 10,000 Thargoid hearts has concluded with the anti-Xeno initiative fleet carrier the Astras full to overflowing with alien body parts. The intention is to smear Thargoid entrails and the ammonia-rich liquid that passes for Thargoid blood all over the carrier in the hope that this will make it less conspicuous to Thargoids. Something that seems highly likely to be effective. However, the appeal was so successful that the anti xenu initiative has now entered into a commercial arrangement with the fast food outlet McThargoids and will be supplying the filling for those tasty quarter pounder with hydra tissue and cheeseburgers for many years to come. All commanders who took part, plus quite a few others who were able to borrow a Thargoid heart from a friend, will soon be granted a special anti xeno medal in the form of a decal they can wear proudly upon their ship. The announcement of an announcement. The Pilots' Federation has announced that the long-awaited development diaries are coming soon and that the date of the first one will be announced on Thursday. There is also the rumour of a special cameo appearance by a very special person indeed, who might just, and yes, it's a long shot, might just be Chris Roberts. With Lave Radio taking a holiday, August is the ideal month to finally start delivering some concrete details about Odyssey. And that is this week's Galnet News. Galnet News, we read the news so you don't have to.